So session data is basically just player data that's stored on the server and it's only available during the player session. And the player session is basically just the player joining the game, that's when the session starts, to the point of them leaving the game. And that's when the session ends. And how to create session data. So let's start off by adding a server script inside of the server script service. And the first thing we need is the directory that's going to be the session data variable. And as of right now, we need to leave it as an empty table like this. Did I say directory? I meant dictionary. But anyway, so this is our session variable. As of right now, it doesn't have anything in it. And to put any data inside of here, like I said, this data is going to be the player data. So first we need to get the player service. And then we need to make two functions. One is going to be on player entered, which is going to take the player argument, which is the player, and this function is not going to return anything. And then another function that's going to be on player exited. And then we need to connect these two functions on the player added and player removing calls from the player service. So you do player service that player added. And then we just connect on player entered. Then player service that player removing connect on player exited. And on the player entered function, we need to build the session data. So we either need to refer to the player instance, which is usually the case, because the player instance is not going to be repeatable, or maybe something else that's also not going to be repeatable, as player's user ID. But in most of the cases, you want to use the player instance, so you will just do session from player, is going to be equal to whatever data we want. Usually you don't want anything like a display name because that's gonna be repeating and if someone else already has a session data in the server then the player who entered has the same display name as the player that's already in the session then the player who entered is going to override this data. So it's best to leave it as the player instance. And this data can be whatever you want like a table of let's say coins wins rounds or whatever. So this would be the session data constructor for the player and a deconstructor would be setting the player session to nil. And setting this to nil will remove the player index from the session. And just to show it how it works, I'm basically just going to print out the session data after I join. And it's going to be the whole table. And then I'm going to print out the session data after I leave and also right before I change it to nil. And this one is before nil, and this one is after nil, and this is just after join. So I'm going to just play the game right now, and this one is going to go on the side right here, and just show you the output. So you have the session after I joined, and this is the player instance with the instance ID, and for this, if you wanted to refer to the player from the session, from code, it's going to refer to this instance. This is basically just how the instance from the player is written in the table. Then we have this data table right here that's going to be coins, wins and rounds. And it's like this. And these values, these are the base starting values that every player will have right after they join. So each player that joins is going to have 10 coins, 10 wins and 100 rounds that we can later modify for the session. And I'm just going to stop playing the session. So my character is going to leave the game. And then there is the before nil and after nil prints. So this before nil is still going to have the session from right here. And after nil is not going to have the data. It's an empty table as it was on the start right here. And right now let's change the session data to show how we can modify these values. To basically just showcase how we can change the data in session data and it doesn't really matter if I do it after joining or before leaving because it's just going to get printed out. So to modify session data you just do session from player and then you have these three values that were assigned right here previously. So let's give the player like maybe plus 20 coins. And let's do another playtest. And right now after joining I have this data which is again this table that was assigned right here. 
And if I leave the game, this is going to be the data that was changed before I left, right here. So instead of 10 coins, I should have 30. And let's see. And I do in fact have 30 coins. So you can see that session data is basically really simple. And all of this is a neat way of having data that's only available for a session. Instead of having to use something like data stores to basically load the data that was saved for the player whenever they join, then save it in the data store after they leave. And there is still one more thing since this session is a local variable and it's only going to be available inside of this script right here. And there is also a way that the session data is going to be shared between the scripts. And that's with the use of module scripts. So I need to add a module to the script and let's name this one like session module. And we can either make it so this module variable is going to be the session, but a more flexible thing is to have another variable since this could be a module that, let's say, is a player manager, where you do other stuff like teleporting the player, managing the player, and so on. So you can create a session variable here, which is going to be also an empty table. And then from this session module, we need to change this session to a required call, where the session module is inside of the script, so we just do script that session module. And then instead of the on player entered and on player exited functions, where we assigned everything and remove the session, what we can do is create two methods inside of the module. So we do function module and then the colon add index. And this add index is going to take the argument of the player and it's also not going to return anything. And same as add index, we need to have a remove index method like this. So now I can copy all of this from right here and just paste it in the add index. And same with this one on the remove index. And on player entered what we need to do is do session then add index for the player. And then on the player exited is going to be session and then remove index instead. So I'm going to do a playtest and here is the printout after I joined that has the player instance and the data again, which is the table. And after I leave, it's again going to have the modified table and it's going to be empty after removing. And what's neat about having a session module is that imagine that this session module was in the server storage. And I'm gonna rename this script to script1 and just duplicate it and name this one script2. And now this script2, when I move it here, this doesn't need the player entered and player exited because this script handles everything. So I can just remove all of this. And let's say I wanted to get the data after like maybe 10 seconds. So I would do session data is equal to, and then right now I'm going to set it to nil because I need to create another method because I could just refer to the module and do the dot notation to get the session, but something I prefer to do is add another method, which is going to return the session data. And now this method is just going to be return session, like this. So now the session data is going to be the session, then choose return session, and then I'm going to print out the session data. And then just change these two lines in the scripts because we also change the path of the session module. So if I do a playtest and then just wait a little bit, it's going to give an error for... And that's because I misnamed this method. Anyway, so now this is the first table that was printed out. And this one was from the script one. And then there is this another table that's also the session data from script two. And a neat thing about this session, right, although we assign it into a local variable, it's still the same variable from the module right here. So even if I add, let's say, a whatever value, which is going to be 10, if I were to change this local variable, which I'm going to do by session data that value, and then plus equal to add, let's say, 5. So instead of 10, it's going to be 15. And then just printed out the session data right here. If I do a playtest right now, this first table is the after join table, which is going to have 10 value. And then after these 10 seconds, this table that just popped up should have 15. And it does have 15 value. And this script changed the value of the session data and the value was inside of this module, which means that this is not a value that's in the local scope. So even if I stop playing and my character is going to leave the game, there is going to be this before nil table that's going to have 15 value as well. And then the after nil, which also has the 15 value but just doesn't have the player. 
So this is just an example how you can make the session data from a module global. And that's basically all there is to the session data. So as usual, if you found this tutorial informative, then please leave a like. It would really support me and the channel. You can also consider becoming a channel member, but that's going to be everything for today. So thank you guys for watching and see ya.